You guys are waiting for on, uh, Andreas Antonopoulos, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be another hour. Yes. But uh, instead, you got Joel Andreas Travanopoulos right now. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna rock the mic for you guys. Okay, which? Oh, there he uh, is, right there. <laughs> they're waiting for you. Yeah, they're waiting for you. We're just gonna warm them up for you. Uh, so I'm Joel Com. This is Travis Wright. Any listeners to the Bad Crypto Podcast in the house? Ooh, hey, thank All you. right. Wow. Very nice. That just warms the cockles of my heart. That is true. I was going to actually do this event sober, but I kept walking through this door, so I might be a little bit high from that. I'm not sure. Everybody's out there puffing. Travis mentioned that the <laughs> M is missing yeah. from... From Meth here. Denver. So yeah. excited to be here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our show live here on stage, similar to what we do on the one that's usually in your ears, but we're going to do some interactive stuff with you guys here in the audience. And, and one of the segments that we're going to do later in the show is called our 30-second crypto pitch. We are totally going to violate the rules of ETH Denver and allow several of you to come up in, in, in you'll have 30 seconds to share your project. The more novel it is, the more fun we'll have with it. So uh, if you want to come up, this is going to go onto our final podcast that gets released in March. First week in March? Is that right, Aaron, the producer? First week in March. So this is an opportunity for some free exposure on our show. So if you want to participate in the 30-second crypto pitch, mm -hmm. please raise your hand. Yeah. Who's okay. Got a, who's got a cool dap? You're cool, yeah, if you got a cool dap. Here we go. One, All right, one. you're number one. Remember your number. Yes, are you guys you are, in? You're on it now. Yes, yeah, you're, you're in. You're, you're number two. Record, Who number else? Fr free marketing, guys. Free chance to get up and share your project. Who's got a cool dap? They're actually the people with the cool daps are all up on the second floor. On the next yeah, floor. all the cool dap people are up there. What's up with that? All the cool cats and the, with the daps. There's another one. Number three. three. Right on. Anybody else want to have an opportunity Who's to got share some cool daps? Anybody in a, got a crypto shitty pitch? <laughs> Anybody got a really horrible shit coin? A crap. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Number four. Don't forget your four. number because we're going to line Perfect. you up. Who else? Maybe we'll go five. Come on. Don't get so excited right now. There's a lot of people. There's Andreas, people do you have a dap you want to pitch? I know. Should I? Uh... <laughs> number five. Andreas has a shit coin he wants to pitch, don't you? You're no. five. <laughs> oh, do we already have a five? You're four. You're Four, five. Five. All right. Right on. Any more? Come on. All right. We'll give you one more chance before we actually do this thing. So we're going to record. Get your bravery up, okay? It's just harness it. I know, right? The whole audience is going to hear about it, man. They want to hear about your dad. All right. Should we do a show? Maybe. Right, have a seat, a Travis show. Wright. Let's do a show. All right. We're going to do a Hello, show. everybody. We're doing a show. We're going to do a show. Here we go. Uh, this is Bad Crypto episode number 247, titled Live from ETH Denver for broadcast Sunday, March 3rd, except for those of you who are watching out in YouTube land live right now. Oh. And when I say ETH Denver, you guys better make some noise, okay? Let's try it. ETH Denver. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay, he here we go. He raised his eyebrows. He, did, he didn't make any sound. <laughs> but he I heard went, him. He just went... <laughs> I, I felt a, a movement in yeah, the cosmos. It was, it was a wind. Okay, here we go with the teaser in three, two. It's a snowy, no, sunny, no, snowy day in Denver, and we're surrounded by a cornucopia of intelligence and creativity at ETH Denver. Yes, the state of Colorado is a thriving hub of Ethereum blockchain innovation, and today we're going to bring you proof. John Pauler and Kevin Awaki are going to join us for a special panel where we'll explore the future of work. Sean Lee of Formatic is going to tell us about building a Mo Beta MetaMask. And several unsuspecting audience members are going to have their 30 seconds in the spotlight to share their crypto pitch. Imagine coming to hear Andreas Antonopoulos speak and realizing he doesn't come on for another hour. That's what's happening right now on episode number 247 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Who's bad? Welcome to the Bad Crypto Podcast, the show for the crypto curious, the crypto serious, and I feel legitimately, Mr. Travis Wright, like the dumbest person in the room. 
Well, that's possible. I think it is because it is possible. I mean, it, there's some really smart people here. Super smart. This uh, this location is amazing. It's six floors of total nerdy, geeky biddling. That's true. You got the biddle stage over there. This is the first floor. You go up, and then there's all the sponsors. You go up again. There's people that are doing a hackathon. Mm -hmm. You keep going up. There's more hacking going on, and man, you just keep going up. Brilliant people all over the place. Third floor. Don't hack my phone, yo. That's true. Guys up there. Yeah. It's it's good to be here though, and we appreciate the uh, East Denver folks for Joel. Uh, it took Joel flew in from uh, what six blocks away. From six blocks away, yeah. he, who he's are like, our, I guess I'll do this. Who are our Denver natives? Yeah, they Very can't nice. hear your hands just unless you clap that's true. them. But that is uh, true. but that's good. Yeah, Travis came in all the way from Kansas City, and uh, his team did not make it to the Super Bowl. That's true. Thanks. Thanks for that. Still crying a little Still tear. Still sad about that. But I got a good quarterback for the next couple of years. So that's good. There you go. All right. Well, All we, about that. We got a great show. We got some great guests that are going to come up here today and join us, including uh, some people that don't even know yet that they're going to be up on stage because they've got a cool crypto project that they want to share with us and, and, uh, and with the world. Yeah. There's cool crypto projects being built right now upstairs. There are. So I think maybe to get things started, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the current news? Let's do that. That's the cue for our engineer back home to play the little music that goes ba da ba ba just like that. Yeah, it's very right. fancy. No, you don't have to play That's it. That's a good I, one. He I, got his own. He's yeah. got his own up there up in the balcony. By the way, the unappreciated, the, the people that are sometimes invisible at these events, how about a hand for all the behind-the-scenes people that make this thing work? That's true. Good job. You guys, if, if you don't make us look good, then, then you don't look good. All right, here we go into the news. So, Mr. Travis Wright, there is some news from Mr. Jack Dorsey the CEO, founder of Square and the Twitters, mm -hmm. the highly centralized social media service that never censors anybody. That's true. I used to really love Twitter back in the day. Yeah. But, but here's the deal right now is uh, Square is, um, is integrating Bitcoin Lightning, and they believe that this could be the thing that sends us off into the stratosphere. Yeah. You know, Jack Dorsey's really big on Bitcoin. He's had a lot of conversations about it. You've seen a lot of interviews where he's a big fan of it. You know, they've, inter they've uh, integrated uh, Bitcoin into Square at one point. I think they took it out for a while, and maybe it's back in now. But um, you know what? I think that, that that's what we need. And that's one of the things that they said is that they think that, that Bitcoin Lightning on Square could be bigger than the crypto ETFs and backed combined. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a big statement. Uh, Alec... Zoopsness, some, 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 I can't, I don't know what his name is, but Alex. That was really good. That was uh, really good. Yeah, he tweets out Jack Dorsey says Lightning Network coming to Square's Cash App is a when, not if. This will have a larger impact on Bitcoin adoption than both backed and an ETF. The launch of the Bitcoin Network in 2009 was a global earthquake. Now it is time for the tsunami. Nice. <sighs> Big waves of cash money. When Lambo. I like it. I like, you know what? I mean, you know, last year was, was, you know, leading up to January of last year was so fun. January was a nice ride. And then since then, we've it's been like that sad trombone. It's been, <laughs> it's been less fun. <laughs> However, what did Charlie Lee say after he sold all his Litecoin at the high? <laughs> no. <laughs> what what Charlie Lee said is, now is the time to get to work, and that's what the folks here at East Denver are doing. It's time but to biddle. I just I want to say that as I walk around and watch people biddling here, and yes, I meant to say biddle for those listening you at home. If you don't know what it is, Google that. This reminds me of going to an uh, early web event back in 1995 when I got started to see the people in this room, there are people that are going to change the world in this building right now. And that is exciting. Mm -hmm. People who are already changing the world. They're going to change it more. That's true. That's true. I like that. I thought that was a, that's a pretty solid article here. What's the next article we have coming up here? Uh, here, this is the latest news. Apparently, ETH Denver is running on blockchain. <laughs> 
Very good. How cool is this with all these food trucks out here in my little wallet with what is my coin? My, my Buffy Duffy coin of some kind or yeah. other? Yeah, your, uh, what is it, the Buffalo Unicorn Die, I, bu yeah. Buffalo Die, something? I don't know, but it worked really fast, and I was amazed at how fast it worked. And the, and the folks out there in the food truck were amazed at how fast it is. And then somebody came up to me and goes, that's because it's on a test net. It's not on the main net, so it'd be way slower on the main net. He was very, he was very hipstery, and I was yeah. like, "Thanks a lot." And you're the guy who brought the snow too, I think, on the yeah. sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> no buff coin or whatever it was for you, but it was super cool. And by the way, who else staked their coin in advance, huh? Because I got oh. forty dollars for staking. Oh. And Travis, what did you get? I got sixteen. You got a rock. <laughs> yeah, I got the I got the least amount. You, you that get was nothing good, though. like it. Uh, this there's is a, it. there's there's a truck out there that has fresh. Choco taco waffle uh, ice cream things. Like, that's crazy. And you can buy it with crypto. <laughs> These people in the audience know that because they wouldn't had one. But, like, people in, in, in audience land doesn't know Oh, no, that. they're listening right now. They're, they're like, I want a fresh choco taco. A fresh choco taco? That's huh. legit. How do I pay for that? I would, I would give that a five-star rating. Okay, so we have spent a little time over at DApp Radar. We're just going to call it DAP because it makes more sense than calling it a DApp. And we noticed, and you guys probably have noticed as well, that on DAP Radar, if you go, it takes you to go down to like number 40 before you get to an Ethereum DAP. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you guys pop open your phone and go to DAPRadar.com and check out the ratings, what happens is you see a whole bunch from EOS and Tron, mm -hmm. but the first one down, I think it is ranked number 40 today, it's IDEX. And then Fork Delta is one of the other ones. So those are the dApps that have more transactions and more volume through them right now. So we're step, like, what's up? up? What's up, Ethland? Come on, let's get the hey. dApps going. All this biddling is great. Let's roll them out. Let's get <laughs> users. Uh, just because all these dApps are live, this article on Crypto Globe uh, features a tweet by a Kevin Rook, and he says there are now 1,375 live ETH dApps. Mm. 86% of them had zero users today. 93% of them had zero TX volume today. So 90% of DApps did yeah. not record any transactions. And that is amazing. And then also across all of the platforms, there are 1828, 1828 live DApps. Same thing. 77% of them have zero users. 85% of them have zero transaction volume. Mm -hmm. So there's some cool apps and dApps that are being built, but how do we get users on these? We need eDAP option. <laughs> I just, I, I it, wordified. That was, that was good. Like da that? Uh, adoption. Very good. Nicely done, Mr. Jokam. Yeah. So, uh, but just as a, um, a tail to that, EOS and Tron have greater on-chain USD volume than Ethereum. So you guys that are developing here at ETH Denver take that as a challenge to say, uh, EOS and Tron, eat a bag of crypto. Yeah. It's like, and then also you look at it and you go, how much of that is real volume? How much of that is bots, right? There is no way to really tell what activity on some of those platforms are real or not, Mr. Jokam. How many of them are Russian bots? That might be Russian I bots. Am, I am hacking your phone right now as we speak. Oh, you need to stop that. That's not good. I am, I am hacking. going to have an investigation into you. There is some optimistic uh, people out there in the crypto space. This there's guy, like three people optimistic there's, left. <laughs> there's three. I think jo John McAfee <laughs> is still betting that he's going to get the whole on Andreas, his number. Before Andreas, he's, he's, he's uh, optimistic too. <laughs> are we going to – is this pick on Andreas <laughs> hour? You guys will get to hear from him in about 30 minutes. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, so – there's a mining pool called Poolin, and they control 10% of the Bitcoin network. Uh, Zhu Fa says that the next Bitcoin bull run will push the crypto to between, here's a nice range, 74,000 and 740,000. Mm. I would be happy with 7,400 at this point. <laughs> Let's, uh, I mean, I'm being real. <laughs> move that. Let's move it. Let's one step at a time, folks. We're Let's hit 4,000 again. We're trying Let's not to be sad. We're trying to be <laughs> trying to be, make people happy. Yeah. Mr. Zufa. <laughs> yeah, that's his name. Zufa. Uh, and do we have any gamers here in the house? Any PUBG fans? Or no? He's like, oh no, no PUBG for me. Fortnite all the way, baby. 
<laughs> well, here's the deal. They discovered that the uh, the hackers around the uh, Cryptopia hack used PUBG to converse and build their master plan. They chatted online in this game to build their plan to mm. uh, to steal all the cryptos. That wasn't very nice of them. But it was nice of them to leave a record of their communication, I suppose. Uh, 24 suspects. Mm. The Istanbul Cybercrime Branch Office. Uh, 24 suspects maintain communication through the chat of PUBG. That's crazy. Which, for those who don't know mobile games, they, this article has to say it's very similar to Fortnite because of all the... You play Fortnite, don't you? Is it you? a blockchain version no. of Fortnite? Fortnite is so 2018, right? Wow. It's over. It's done. So we have a Fortnite hater. How, how old are you? 14, hating on Fortnite. That's nice. You have some good parents. <laughs> my, my kids love Fortnite. I, don't, I must be Bad doing parents. something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any more news? That's the news? That is, that is the news. That's the news. All right, we're going to transition here, and our, our, um, our engineer is going to play a cool little jingle, and we're going to bring on our, uh, our first guest. So, assuming, hey, Sean, you can come on up here, buddy. Mr. Sean Lee. Everybody give it up for Sean Lee. Big round of applause. <clears throat> this was Johnny Carson. I'd stand up and shake Hello, your sir. hand, nice but it's not, you. so I'll sit and shake your hand. Have a seat, grab a mic, and we'll we're do the official. We're very casual up in here. We're so yeah, casual. I just don't want to get up. I've been walking. I mean, you want to get some exercise, go up and down these ramps all day. You know, it's yeah. like, what elevator? I really want to say I'm really impressed with the uh, whole bathroom situation. It's really smart. 2,000 people, one pisser. It's really good. I like that. That was really, that was really helpful. There's uh, a convenience <laughs> store over there to use. There's it. a convenience store. Like every time there's like a line. One line, That's no good. waiting. And there's food trucks. Where do they go? I don't know. They don't have their own porta. They got to wait on a line. And like two of the toilets are clogged. <laughs> All right, we're officially off Speaking the rails. Speaking of shit coins. Uh, coming, in, coming in with uh, our <laughs> guest, Shush You, in three, two, and we're pleased to welcome to the show the co-founder of Fortmatic, not to be confused with Fortnite, Mr. Sean Lee. Welcome, Sean. Hello. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good, good. Is, uh, uh, is it bother you being in front of a uh, live studio audience? Yeah, it's the first time doing this on a live nice. audience. Very good. Give it up for him. I'd say nice. he's doing all first right. Time. So Thanks. far, so good, brother. Uh, Sean is a developer. He is uh, a University of Waterloo alum. He builds Web3 D apps without extensions or downloads in the website fortmatic.com with the intention of building a Mo Beta MetaMask. Yeah. Yes, yes. Why? What, what's wrong with MetaMask? I like that you get the little fox guy and type in no, your password I, and boom. I don't hate animals. I love animals. <laughs> um, <laughs> so That's good. Um, you know, just following up with the numbers of DAB users you guys said, um, I was running a number w a couple of days ago. There was 18, like basically 8,000 users across all 1,800 DAPs mm. on a daily basis. So, 8,000 across all 1,800 DAPs. Yeah, on mm. the state of the DAPs. So, you know, the adoption is nowhere close to where it needs to be. And... You know, I came from a uh, kind of UX design background um, uh, at a company called Docker. So, you know, I went ahead and kind of analyzed the steps that it take for users to get, to submit their first transaction to the blockchain through dApps. And the number is 22 steps. <laughs> so That's so easy. <laughs> That's so easy. Grandma can totally do that, right? Grandma. <laughs> Grandma gets stuck on like the first one. Like, what do I do now? Grandma's bit biddling. <laughs> she's she's going after it. Wow, twenty two steps. That's what it takes. Yeah, twenty two steps, and it could be more. Mm. If, uh, say, you don't have cryptocurrency and you gotta go somewhere else and transfer it over, or it goes through uh, like a KYC process and get started, wait for two to five days until your fund arrives, and then transfer it over. Mm. By the time the average user has already lost interest. So um, for us, you know, we want to take, you know, small, small steps and small wins to help us get there. Um, so we essentially um, shortened the 22 steps to eight steps. Uh -huh. And, um, but, you know, we're still working on ways to make sure that we can get crypto into the wallets easier. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a great start. 
What, what, what's the context of the, those steps that you're eliminating? Under what category yeah. would those fall? Um, so, what, was um, that a great question, by the way? I just yeah, wanted to know. Okay, that was good. a very good question. Good, good. good question. Uh, so for existing dApps, uh, a lot of dApps has, uh, has to instruct the users on you know, what is MetaMask, why they need to go to the Chrome store and download this thing, and then point them to somewhere else that's other than their own user experience. Um, and then download the extension, have to know to come back to the dApp um, just to get started. Um, and then when they started, they get hit by like this 12 to 24 word seed phrase that they gotta manually write down um, somewhere to be absolutely safe. Um, and you know, basically, after this extensive onboarding process, the user finally is, uh, has an account, um, and then they have to go somewhere else to transfer the crypto mm -hmm. over, and then click confirm. Right. So it's like a lot of steps in between and context switching for the users, um, and one way that uh, we aim to solve it is um, like rather than forcing users to use decentralized apps in like the most decentralized way, uh, we try to offer a um, kind of a ramp to ease users into the Web3 world from Web2. So we pick basically the simplest way possible is you can uh, get a, a Ethereum account just with your phone number. Mm. You don't even have to come up with a password. So you put in your phone number, we'll send you a one-time passcode that you can type in, and then boom, you have your account. So um, drastically reducing the unfamiliarity with um, the existing solutions. Now can you send crypto to, to their phone number? Um, because that's something that's, I mean, that'd be that would be so handy because that's one thing that, you know, you have people's email address, you have their phone number, but I don't have your huge, long, you know, you know, Bitcoin address or whatever. So if I could send crypto to someone's phone number, mm -hmm. that would be so handy. Is that something that, that you're going to be able to yeah, do? Yeah, definitely something that is, you know, we're interested in um, is to further reduce the friction, like more and more. Um, but, you know, we would like to build with the community as mm -hmm. well. Because there are very, um, some very good projects like uh, ENS. It's kind of like um, a name registry for, um, for like Ethereum addresses that people can remember. Um, it, it's kind of like the internet days where you had mm. the IP addresses first. And then you have um, the actual human memorizable yeah. domains. I asked you about this upstairs. And I think uh, the folks out here might be interested in that as well. So back in October of 2017, uh, I was on T-Mobile, and I got, I got SIM jacked, you know? Somebody contacted T-Mobile, acted like they were me, got my phone number switched over to another phone, mm -hmm. and then I was pissed. <laughs> and then I had to solve that problem, and it was crazy, but I figured it out. And then the dude logged into my app, logged in, he got my Apple ID, logged into his phone with my Apple ID, and once I got Apple back, I was able to figure out exactly where he lived, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's which was great. nice. <laughs> Great story. What, what episode yeah, was that? That was episode like 41. But I want to know this. How does your system prevent, like if, if SIM card jackings happen a lot, Michael Turpin lost a bunch of money, $24 million. How do we ensure that doesn't happen? Because if right. so, it, you're going to be a target. For sure. Um, so we look at it, so still the same, like progressive disclosure. Start really simple. And as users deposit more funds into the wallet, we will basically really enforce them to add these other optionality, okay. right? Like you can add a pin code if you really want to protect your funds um, or, um, you know, we're working on ways to add like a two-factor. It's like a progressive off. sign up. Yes, Over yes. Time, like, here you sign up with your phone number and you can go. But if you add this amount of money, we got to do some more KYC, right. we, AML, and uh, Not down. KYC per se, but, um, but for like, we're, we don't want to support like institutional amount uh, investors, but right. like just like, Everyday users, uh, let's say they deposit a, uh, like more money into the system, we want to protect their funds, right? Mm. So we want to let them know or even prevent the funds until, uh, until they add more uh, security options in. Well, that's great. Hey, I can give you my phone number if you want to test it out and send some. Send some no, no, just send it to A6, capital Q, five, <laughs> yeah. Nine, yeah. yeah. So with, with MetaMask, we've got this little Chrome extension. Boop. 
pops down there and it's a applicable across all these sites. So talk about how Fortmatic is going to change that. Yeah, so with Fortmatic, there's no Chrome extension, uh, no mobile Suck it, Google. <laughs> uh. So, I mean, it's, it's the very safe way, right? It, let's say if you build your app on Chrome, uh, if you build your app on iOS, um, you know, if anything happens, these vendors can shut you down. Um, and I think the truly, like, decentralized platform is the web. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they can't remove the modern browsers out there. Um, so basically how Formatic works is it's seamless within your browser. Um, and any browser? Any modern browser. Uh, will, will it work in Brave or Opera? or? Uh, if they run, like, a Chromium engine, it, it should work. What about what about Explorer like 5.5 <laughs> Netscape <laughs> Mosaic no. any of those no that modern I can't, ones that I can't promise good yet. stuff any other any other uh, cool information you like to let the audience yeah, know about yeah. before we wrap uh, this up for sure um, and if you are already a developer building a DApp that works with MetaMask it will be really really easy to switch so if, once you switch your um, Web3 provider with the Fortmatic provider, it will just work automatically. So oh. super low friction to switch over and um, Web3 compatible. So And we work on embracing the, the protocols and the EIPs uh, that come up. You say it's going to be easy to switch, but some people get emotionally attached to their extensions. And, you know, they like seeing the little fox guy. And there's, don't and go. It looks at you. And don't you're like, go. You know, yeah. it, it's not mutually exclusive. So a lot Are you going to do little animals, like a little whale? <laughs> no, no, I, I'm thinking of the mascot. Okay. Um, but I wanna, can it be a sloth? Oh, no, because like that's sloth. slow. That's really no, slow. No, no, but, but they're just so cute. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> or panda, I don't, I don't know. Panda, um, all right. Um, but I think uh, for some of our partners, we're not suggesting them to remove the MetaMask option, but more uh, adding us as an additional provider. So you can Very pick good. between if you want to use MetaMask, if you want to use Fortmatic, um, you know, it's all possible. You can there be in an open relationship with your wallet mm -hmm. thanks to yes. uh, Sean Lee. Fortmatic. Very nice. <laughs> Give it up for Sean Lee, everybody. Thank you. All right. All right. You, That's where nice our – way to go, brother. Nope. Ow. I'm going to shake hands because I don't – Want a fist bump after Travis is done? It makes me seem like a copycat. <laughs> good stuff. Right, okay, good. Um, let's bring our uh, our next guest up, and then we will officially welcome them. But John and Kevin, get your butts up here, yo. John I, and Kevin. John's, not, to. John's like, not listening. John's in the green room. John's He's like, in yeah. a conversation. I'll come up there when I want to. <laughs> I'm not ready. Oh, he's bringing beers though. That's cool. Yeah, he's got to be. Those aren't beers. Those are like energy turn this drinks. Into Good a Lord, party, those apparently. are big ass energy drinks. Wow. I want a choco Gio. taco. Can you just run out and get me one of those? No. <laughs> no. Look at this. Good Lord, that is a big ass drink. Fantastic. Oh my look God. Look at that. Buffa corn ale. Buffa corn ale. Oh my gosh. Wait, we, need, actually, we need a photo here. Everybody here. Wait a second. Do, this is do a course light. You just wrapped it in a thing. Shh, don't tell them. You guys grab your, <laughs> grab your buffa corns and lean in here. Let's get a photo. That's entertainment. Very good. Wait, That's okay, good. hold it, hold it. That's going to be my new cover photo right there. All right, That's let's good. do the official intro for this segment after our little music plays. And here we go. You going to pour some out for our homies? I don't know. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two. What does the future of work look like, and will I still have to work? I don't know, but with us, we got a couple gentlemen. What? Travis just popped open a buff of corn ale live on stage That's the here. future of work. Right. She is, mate. Schlante. It's, it's uh, 5 o'clock somewhere. We have with us the oh, wait, uh, founder here. and steward of ETH Denver, also the founder of Opolis, Mr. John Poller. <laughs> Woo! And uh, they're kind of excited that you're here, John, but we're, they love we're glad you. you're here. They really love you. That's good. 
<laughs> he's like, I'm not doing this again next year. Screw y'all. Uh, also with us, we have the founder of Gitcoin. He is also their scientist and chief janitor, a hacker and entrepreneur from Boulder, Colorado, home of Mork and Mindy, Mr. Kevin Owaki. Very nice. I think they like Kevin just a little bit more. Yep. They might. Because he's getting them coins. <laughs> Yeah. Eat them. Exactly. Get them coins. I didn't get that before. No, I got that. Now you're going to get them. Where are my coins? I want to get them. That's like the most Jeff Foxworthy pitch that anyone's given for Gitcoin, I think, ever. Yeah. That was good. You, you know but you're aren't, from aren't Kansas you, City. Aren't you like the getter of coins? Isn't that what it is? That's, that's what Gitcoin is, yeah. Getter coins. That's yep. good. Let, that's let's, very nice. Let's good. start there, actually. What, what, it, what is Gitcoin? I mean, I know it's a D app, but... What does one get with Gitcoin? It is spelled like GitHub, so that's kind of a clue for one, maybe, right? A little bit of something with that? Yeah, that is a, a, a clue. Uh, Git is a popular version control system that, op that software developers use, and Gitcoin is a way that you can incentivize open source software development and get Ether tokens. We've actually been live since 2017. We skipped the whole ICO thing so that we could actually focus on our user base and build a community and have done almost a million dollars worth of open source bounties. Very nice. Yeah. Spontaneous applause. Yeah. Well done. And and hold, hold, when you speak, hold that mic a little closer like you just make it. Make love to the microphone. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. This is a, un, okay. <laughs> there we are. Yeah. Hello, that, that way we pick up on all the dulcet tones. <clears throat> Dulcet Very tones. good. So the f the future of work. How how does how do you envision the Gitcoin helping is with the future of work? Because you guys are doing different. You guys are doing something together as well, right? So you guys Gitcoin, yeah. Opolis, and then something together. Gitcoinopolis. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue, huh? Yeah. Really good. Uh, so we think that the future of work, at least within our narrow niche of software development, is focused on open source transparency and also remote work. And those are sort of the rails that Gitcoin is built on. Since we've done almost 3,000 bounties, we've learned that uh, a lot of the people who would have been working on full-time jobs in the past, uh, they don't have access to the services that traditionally would have been bundled with work. So things like healthcare and uh, and uh, retirement and things of that nature have traditionally been bundled with work in our present day firm oriented structure. And what's great about uh, the Gitcoin Opolis partnership that we envision is that Gitcoin can be the market layer through which you find work to do software development and Opolis is self-sovereign employment uh, in which you can bundle up. Well, I can't give the Opolis pitch, but yeah, you guys, let's, let's, you, hey, John, yeah. hey man, I got no you, voice. You're doing great. You guys hey, are going to solve that shit for us. It yeah, John, like. talk about uh, talk about Opolis and talk about the news that came from uh, Joe Lubin just yesterday here at uh, ETH Denver. Yeah, um, and just hold since your voice is low, just yeah. hold it tight. You guys pot them up good and loud. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're excited about collaboration. So Opolis is really what we call the employment layer. So individuals need a legal framework to um, tap into for the things that Kevin mentioned with healthcare, insurance, risk management, compliance, even tax payments. And currently, currently in, the, in the crypto space, even what Kevin's working on, it's, it's really difficult because you're really just a freelancer as an open source software developer. Is this your second puberty? I just want to know. <laughs> no, my, my voice is totally it's time to dropped. change. It's, yeah. it, it's actually his third. Maybe, maybe I can fourth. empathize. That happens, especially at these events. Yeah. You're talking to everybody, and then it gets loud. You're like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you talk too loud. Dude, it's then, like then, if I, then at then day three in Vegas, I, I'm worse than you. I'm like, yes, no. <laughs> yeah. get off my lawn. <laughs> it's true. Get off it. my lawn. <laughs> So the partnership that we're building is really imagining a public infrastructure of employment that includes a market layer, which Gitcoin will provide, and the employment layer, which Opolis will provide. And then there's other components that will integrate. So you could have any number of types of things that could integrate into this stack. Um, we are going to have the DAI token as the native currency, so it, it's stable. Um, so when you're moving payroll around, the last thing that you can do is have volatility involved because 
even if you're sort of I got paid eighteen hundred bucks. I got paid thirteen. I got paid yeah, nine hundred. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's like overnight. It could <laughs> it could totally change. And then yeah. who's right? It's like well, you underpaid it. And then if it goes up, it's like well, I overpaid it. And mm -hmm. so you, you need you need transactional stability in payroll, um, especially for compliance. I mean, there's actually like laws weird that like limit what you can and can't do. Mm. So we're just cryptoizing it as the first stage, and then. It's really about decentralizing what can be decentralized and creating a vertically integrated shared services stack mm -hmm. alongside of this technology that provides the services that freelancers and independents and just regular people need it for is, employment. We're in that we're in that gig economy, right? Exactly. I mean, seriously, there's people who um, their whole their whole income is like I drive Uber and then I do Uber Eats and then I have Dash and then I, wa I walk that. dogs for Rover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> watched yeah so it's it's amazing how people are gonna have that's kind of where we are the future of work is independent multiple income streams not just relying on one right well, yeah and, and the, the the side it, hustle well and the average person doing this doesn't really know how to deal with it in a very efficient way because i've got to get an accountant and an attorney and then if i get paid in crypto yeah. and what do i what's my basis mm -hmm. and like do I have taxes to pay on capital gains because I got paid in Ether six months ago? And well, maybe not that. Maybe I have capital gain losses. <laughs> so, so here's my question: Who do you think in the centralized world is doing this best? That you're then going to kick it up a notch? Corporations. I mean, really, what we're doing is we're just moving employment from corporations mm -hmm. to networks. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we're finally going to have a real legitimate use for LinkedIn is what you're saying. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think we're going to replace LinkedIn. There we go. That's what I was looking for right there. Talk <laughs> about replacing LinkedIn. Yeah, that, that, well, so LinkedIn is a sales channel. That's, that's really all that it is. I mean, from a social media standpoint, like I, I don't know anybody who's like, yeah, oh, yeah, did you see that on LinkedIn? You hear about Twitter, Facebook, maybe, but... LinkedIn oh, I, hear, is, I hear it all the time for people that, really? that benefit. Yeah, that for them, LinkedIn is their go-to social network. They find they see Twitter is the the hellhole that it is. Of, <laughs> right? oh, it is. Uh, they you know Facebook is uh, is really for, more for friends because if you want to do business on Facebook, you got to pay to play. Yeah. And well, just LinkedIn, a minute ago, though, you said that there was no use for LinkedIn, and now you're saying there is. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're fighting over this. I want to have <laughs> You're a, fighting over yeah. this. <laughs> I, I just I know he has multiple personalities. I don't know. Yeah, I know a lot of people that benefit from LinkedIn. So how does this like? Wh what is that next step up? Yeah. Where well, okay, okay. I'll give you an example. I would say LinkedIn is actually my favorite social profile really? platform at this point because they're not. I've not noticed them censoring anyone yet. I mean, Twitter and YouTube and Facebook—they're all censoring and getting rid of dissenting opinions. I've sure. not seen too much of that in LinkedIn yet. No, not really. But you can't trust the information there. I mean, you can put anything about yourself or anything about your credentials. Now, I don't know. I see these pictures, these profiles, these people with all these logos from CNN and uh, Fox, and I, I trust completely that they've been all uh, over I'm, those I'm networks. sure you do. Do you yeah. mean I didn't get my PhD <laughs> at Harvard? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm actually the president <laughs> of Prussia. That's I think amazing. They, like right now. I mean, the number one problem with LinkedIn is that they own your data and your reputation, and it's just not cool that they're making $9 a year off of me as a semi-active user. I want to self-sovereign, own my professional resume. I want to be able to opt in to people having mm -hmm. access to that and maybe make a get a couple coins in exchange for my three box data or my Gitcoin kudos data. And uh, it's not it's not okay that LinkedIn can build a multi-billion dollar market cap off of my resume data and just putting that in a relational database and selling it to re recruiters. That's okay. Turn exactly. it into a wave. Let it flow. Feel it. Yeah. It's my data. That's good. That's you're, true. you're like, like the soft-spoken preacher over there. He's like, I yeah. see you on a hilltop, you know, in lotus position or something. Yeah. Tell us something Spewing else. A great one. John, John decided he wanted to be the bad cop, so I guess he'll be the good cop over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he's exactly right. I mean, the dynamic that the that LinkedIn is just an example of a third-party market. All right, so people who are benefiting from this are just being connected through this third party who's taking a tax for providing that market. Now that information that's being 
provided to the market is really not owned by LinkedIn. They're just creating the market space. In the future, when you have decentralized employment organizations and Gitcoin, you have your own markets. You don't need a third party to create a market for you. And then the organization that you create can create the rules around data sharing and how it's monetized. So if I decide I want to share my information with a company, they'll pay me for it instead of paying LinkedIn for it. So you're going to be able to use that platform, the Gitopolis hybrid, to find freelancers to do work as well? well of course. Very nice. I mean, that, that, the, the, the point to this is, is getting rid of a lot of the middle layers that don't mm. actually create optimization of connection Very good. and information. Does this also then, part of the big picture, replacing some of the uh, freelancing sites like Upwork? Absolutely. Mm, very good. I like that. Well, Anything up, else we'd like the audience to know? So Upwork takes 20%. Mm. Think about that. So one-fifth of your time is being given to a third party who didn't do anything. What, which also when a, lo a lot of people that are um, outsourcing their labor are coming from countries where – that money is really needed, right? So true. Yeah. And Upwork is like, hey, give us that 20%. Right. Now, they rationalize it by saying, well, somebody in India is now going to make much more than they would have otherwise because they're providing services to a U.S.-based company, mm -hmm. and they're going to get paid more per hour, and that's how we rationalize it. It's still highly, I mean, one-fifth, 20% of my time is being paid to somebody else mm -hmm. just for having some technology. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't well, really. That's sort of the marketplace for them to find right. and connect. So you build so, a new one, and what, what is your percentage going to be? Well, what happens is we create a consortium of technology that, at the base layer, might cost somebody one to two percent. Mm. And what happens is there's a revenue sharing structure that we're aligned and incentivized to cooperate in creating this mm. fully integrated vertical stack, so that. We can scale it much bigger. So instead of just getting a piece of a big pie where there's lots of competitors, we scale it to a place where essentially it's a public utility that we can make it really, really big mm. and really, really efficient. And the economics work at scale. Mm. Get work. John Pollard, Opolis.co, and uh, Kevin Awaki of Gitcoin, Gitcoin.io? Dot .co as well. Give it up for these two. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, gents. Yes, thank you for the beer. Delicious beer. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Boom. <clears throat> Go find that voice of yours. You thank just, you. You still got I another day I saw you slyly st your sticker down there, Kevin. Very nice. That was very nicely. That was rogue. All right. We're going to have a quick edit in there for our engineer while we uh, – everybody who said they wanted to participate in the crypto pitch, we need you to come on up here. Crypto and, pitches. Uh, yo, crypto pitches. <laughs> um, so – for those of you that just entered, this is going to be an opportunity for a few more of you, uh, order yourself by number, just like right over here, please, to take 30 One. seconds to violate ETH Denver standards and pitch a project. Mm -hmm. If it's a, especially if it's a D app, something yeah, yeah. that you're working yeah, on. One, if two, it's three, novel, four, that's four, even five. more better. We might make fun of you, but that's all. That's what we do. Did so, anybody harness some bravery? I think we've got we got five right now. Does anybody else we, want we to have participate room for a few more. in the crypto? Who's pitch? got a cool app? Who's got this, a cool app? Cool this project. is going to give you 30 seconds. Boom, there so, he okay, is. come on, get in line. You're number even six. Even though he's got a Broncos hat on, that's okay. Number brother. six. Who else <clears throat> wants their moment in the spotlight? Come on, we got hackers here developing stuffs. Anybody in the back over there? You got you any cool projects you're working you're on? Oh, there's another one right here. There you All go, right, number come seven. On, get, come, you're number seven. Mm -hmm. that, that should, uh, if there's yeah, anybody yeah. else, you could just jump in line behind them. Uh, let's, let's bring you, let's see. Yeah, this is good. Uh, we're going to have you guys come up here then, and the way this is going to work uh, once we start this is uh, I'll invite you up. I'll ask you your name and who you're with. And then we'll grab one of these mics for them. You will have 30 seconds, which you will be timed. What are you doing? I'm just moving this so they can come in and have a chat. Where? I don't know. Just kind of out of the way. Winner gets a beer. Can we just have this table removed? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> there we go. It's really heavy. Yeah, it's so heavy. It's like there we almost go. Almost two pounds. That's good. Very good. Thank you, sir. Crypto um, pitches. Mr. Travis Wright will time the 30 oh, I will seconds. Time it. 
Dudes. We may or may not comment on your project. We might uh, applaud you. We might laugh at you. I don't know. It all remains to be seen, but it's going to be great fun. So, uh, note to our engineer, Crypto Pitch segment starting in three, two, one. Mr. Travis Wright, this is one of my favorite parts of doing the live stage show. Oh, it's the beer? After it, the it is not the, uh, oh, actually, it's not the beer. You haven't even opened your beer. You know that I don't drink beer. Oh, he doesn't like seafood either. I do like wine, though. So if this was a can he of Malbec. He likes to wine. I, <laughs> then I would be wine. all over. But I do. I am a, attracted to the buffacorn. You might mean, want to, that is really nice. Why don't just like, put it on your shelf? He's super <clears> cool. Yeah, keep that. Winner will get a bu- What is it? A buffacorn ale, and they're pretty good, actually. Oh, we're going to judge? For a warm beer? We're going to judge them? No, the audience will judge with their cheers. Okay, with with Cheers for beers. Cheers for beers. Cheers for beers. And then if people are getting seats, they realize that uh, the one and only Andreas Antonopoulos is coming up here soon. Andreas Antonopoulos. He's not a hippopotamus. He's not a hippopotamus, and he's very generous. He's coming here to Denver and going to talk to all of us. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry about that. That was horrible. <coughs> Word. All right. Word. All right. So let's bring up our first contestant. Come on down. Grab a hand up Uh-oh. one of those mics right there. Uh, microphone. Microphone. He's brave, and he is with BravoCoin, obviously. So tell us your name. My name is Adam Barlam, co-founder of BravoCoin. All right, Mr. Travis Wright, you have the clock. In 30 seconds, he will make a buzzing sound that will sound just like... Not so much buzzing, but we're beeping. That's Okay. You tell them when to start. There we go. Three, two, one. All right, raise the hands really quick. How many of you guys have used Yelp before? Awesome. How many of you guys have actually left a review on Yelp? How many of you guys have gotten paid for your review that you left on Yelp? Ooh, no one, huh? Introducing BravoCoin. We basically created Yelp on blockchain where users are compensated for their reviews based upon the amount of upvotes they get from the community. So say you go to a local uh, restaurant or coffee shop down the street, you leave a review for the coffee shop, uh, local users see your review based upon the geo radius. They upvote you. You earn crypto for it in our token. Your time is up. What do you think of the project? Bravocoin.com. Ten free Bravo if you download it. <laughs> I, I left a review on that the other day, actually. On uh, Bravocoin? I did. You, I got, you can I add did. Travis. Travis Wright is his username. I did. I, did. I earned eight Bravos. Bravo for Bravo you, coin, my yeah. friend. Way to go. I don't know go. how much that's worth, though, but that was nice. Nicely I that done. Was pretty fancy. Okay, next contestant. <laughs> Spin the wheel. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We know this guy. And you are? Jason Hartgrave. And you're with? First Contact Crypto. Are you ready to tackle the 30-second crypto pitch beast? 30 seconds on the clock. Let's get ready to rumble and go. What if your first experience with crypto was actually learning and earning some? The old education paradigm is dying. Why pay to go to college anymore when everybody knows that the value of the education and as an educated worker, you're going to be worth far more? But what's the value of somebody to the blockchain? They could actually use, uh, uh, tokenize and actually print an entire new economy and create massive amounts of value. With First Contact Crypto, we really want to build an edu- education and do gamification do 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 place. First Contact Crypto dot Come. Come. Boom. Give it up. What do you think? There it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Jason also told me that he listens to the show, so don't hold that against him. That's great. All right. Third contestant. Come on down. Oh, yeah. The lovely Vanna White here will. Savage, yeah. What? No. <laughs> Hello. What's your name? Yeah. My name is Joe Pitluck. I am CEO of Free Range. Free, Free Range. Range. Yes. Dot com? Freeran.ge. There you go. Dot G-E. Freeran.ge. Free free I get free it. range. I get very it. Good. Nicely done. What is dot G-E? Where is that? Georgia. Awesome. Georgia. Oh. But we're based out of Wyoming. Very good. Wyoming. That was Not a great panel. That was a great panel earlier. I really wanted to get, like, that Tyler dude had an epic cowboy hat, and I was going to. Yeah, and we need, wanted to borrow it. We need to get Caitlin Long on the show. Show producer Aaron. Take note. Caitlin Long. She's awesome. Tyler, yeah. they do, do, do doing the, uh, the legislature for Wyoming as That's well. That's right. Good stuff. All right, let's, uh, let's do this. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. So uh, our company built one of the most popular decentralized apps in the world, thisorthat.io. We beat CryptoKitties and daily active users. And what happened was our bank shut down our bank account right afterwards. 
So we realized you know, we need a bank for this industry where if you deal with digital assets, if you're a blockchain company, if you deal with crypto, you should be able to bank without having fear that your bank account will be closed. So that's what we're building up in Wyoming, is the bank for our industry. There you go. Nice. A bank for our industry. Okay. I dig it. Nicely done. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Drop the mic. Well, don't drop it, don't but drop it, yeah. leave the mic. Don't drop Gently the mic. Gently place the mic. Speaking of banks and crypto, you all have heard the news about the JPM coin, right? JP Morgan issuing their own uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, and now there was an ar another article that we didn't include in the news, but there are in the banking industry saying that the JPM coin will kill Ripple, another centralized banking coin. So I don't know the cheer or boo that. So, we shall see. Yay, we shall see. boo. Yeah. What's boo. your name? Boo, yeah. Tony. Boo, yeah. Tony? Yes, sir. Oh. And you're with? B token. Beetle? B Nest. B Nest. Oh, B Nest. B Nest. You, guys, you guys were on the show last year. Someone else. Someone was. Co founder. All right. Hold the mic tight to your face so we can B hear you. B Nest as in a nest of four Bs. Okay. Yeah. Thanks you guys for having me on. Three and two and one and go. All right. How are you guys doing? How many people here are using Airbnb? How many people had to wait for the host to come and to let them in? How many people uh, don't have toilet paper in their uh, Airbnbs? Had to happen. To <laughs> Actually, my socks had to throw. Oh, man. Thanks for the socks. I should use a towel. We're building an Airbnb <laughs> for the business traveler. Oh, yes. You don't have to worry about late check-ins or people coming, recording with the host to check-in. You don't have to worry about toilet papers. We take care of all that for you. Fast Wi-Fi. Call me up if you have any, is any issues. BNS.com. You use die. You use ETH. Use B tokens to be on oh. this platform. Thank you, guys. B Nest. Yes, sir. B Nest. Nest. What do you guys think? Woo! Airbnb. Nicely done. On the blockchain. Nicely done, sir. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Thank Likewise. you very much. Thank you. And here comes oh, our. Here we he's, go. Oh, oh, he's, he's got, got a briefcase, briefcase too. Briefcase. You know oh, he means snap. business. All right. He means business. All right, grab that microphone. Right there. <clears throat> Speak clearly into it so we can all Speak hear you. Speak clearly into the microphone. Oh, well done. Your name, Very sir. Nice. My name is Mitchell Valentine. I'm with CryptoCatalyst.com, and my project is Brewtegrity. Brewtegrity action. All right. So basically, every good uh, crypto conversation is always surrounded around beer. So that I think the best onboarding moment happens with beer. So I'm creating a small app that basically... A brewery creates an NFT, a simple token, and then you have a client that can read that token. It creates uh, supply chain transparency with the beer. So the beer, the brewery actually explains a little bit about how they make the beer. And the user also gets an opportunity to use uh, crypto to collect uh, th that glass of beer. And they actually mint a token uh, when they drink the beer. So basically, that's my game. Brew integrity. Beer nice. on the blockchain. Here, you should, I, I'm just going to hand this to you right there because I can't think of anybody who deserves it more than... The beer on the blockchain yeah, guy. Beer Give him a I hand. Beer prize. There's another one. We yeah. got another one right here. You're not, you're not technically the winner. I can give out prizes higgledy-piggledy if I want to. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Joe Com, so generous. It's half my show, damn hello, it. There's hello. a microphone hello, right hello. there. How you doing? You, you don't need a mic? Sure, mic? Oh, it's right there. there you go. Right there. He was going to scream for you guys. Cool. I could use this. That's good. Yeah, what's your name? Hi, my name's Aliaga. I'm the founder of Ellipsis Technologies. Our product. Uh, okay. Wait, can wait, go? wait, 30 seconds. A as perfectly advertised on his shirt. Okay, you ready? Nice. Three and two and one and go. So our product is called Dawn Protocol. How do you send a file to somebody without trusting a third party? You can't trust Dropbox. You can't trust Google, like sending it through an attachment through mail. How would you do it? Most people will default to saying either I'll send it to you on a USB stick through mail or something like that. I'll hand it to you. Or a lot of people in this space say we'll do it through some P2P technology. So DOM protocol is a protocol built on top of IPFS. And it, uh, tr it allows for secure, encrypted, trustless data communication. Nice. There you go. What there do you guys go. think? The DOC protocol. Don protocol. D-O-N? D-A-W-N. Don. D-A-W-N. Oh, I thought it was dog. Dawn. 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 That's a better name. Yo, dog. Yo, my protocol. It's the dog protocol. By the way, this is actually a great exercise for anybody who's got any kind of project to be able to hone what it is you're doing and say it in 30 seconds. It is a true elevator speech. Come on down. Now that you've uh, seen everybody right else go before you. This is our last one, unless there's any other ones. Grab a mic. Looks like it's last one. How's it going, guys? Very What's good? your name? There. 
Th- Theron? Thor, like Thor? Thor. Nice. Thor, yeah. Thor. Yeah. Very good. Pick You've heard brain. all the jokes. Pick, pick your, I'm yeah, not going to do all it. All of them, yeah. Because, all right. All right. All right. What's the name of your project? Uh, project's name is Sorry. Sorry? I'm sorry. I'm sorry? Masari. Masari. Hold, hold it close so we can hear you. Masari. Masari. M A S A R I. Okay. Dot. Uh, getmasari.org is the, dot org. the one on site. All right. And go. Okay. So Masari is an on chain scalability focused project based off of Monero's code base. We just launched the Sacred Protocol, which is a first case of uncle mining in CryptoNote. And we're currently working on a protocol uh, named Blocktree, which introduces uh, partition side chains that uh, work in a partially asynchronous, permissionless uh, consensus model, which would increase uh, transaction throughput. Uh, that's uh, the current project. You have four <laughs> seconds to spare. You want to uh, talk to me after this, if you're interested. <laughs> uh, more happy to send you some sorry. Sorry, buddy. Time's up. <laughs> Give him a hand. <laughs> thank you. Excellent. Thank That's you, fun. sir. Great stuff. What's well, sorry? All right. So which of you guys want the beer? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that that dude right the there. Dude. No, she wants it. She wants the beer. You know what? Crypto chicks get beer. Come on, give her a hand. Woo! I'll hand that to her right there. We totally changed the rules of that on you. I did. <laughs> crypto needs women, damn it. That's true. Am I right? And crypto conferences need more men's restrooms. <laughs> Well, that's going to wind up our episode of the Bad Crypto Podcast. You can subscribe and find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio. All the places except YouTube because they deplatformed us. Yeah, for no reason other than... Screw YouTube. Yep, so so centralize that. Mm, Until next time, you guys know what we say when we end the show? Right, so on the count of three, we're going to say stay bad. You ready? One. Two, three. All right, we're gonna do it louder this time. Here we go. One. That was mediocre. That was that was that that was bad. Just that wasn't. Sounded like you didn't even care. Actually, that was, that, yeah. So, so, like, get these people that, off the stage. Andreas is next. So can you guys just get the hell out of here, <laughs> right? Okay. In the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Excellent. Thank you all very much. Andreas Antonopoulos is next. <laughs>